Hey everyone, welcome back to another video from A Man Talks FPL SC. Today is a round 23 NRL Supercoach preview, going through who I think are the best trade targets if you have any trades left. If you do, obviously tune in. If you don't, hopefully you guys still enjoy. But I think now, if you do have trades in hand, is the best time to be chasing point of difference players, high upside players, you know, so you can get an advantage in your head to head finals or if you're trying to chase some extra ground in the overall standings. But if you guys enjoy the video, as always, really appreciate a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing to the channel as well if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So a quick recap of how I actually did in round 22. Not too bad. I scored 1,423, which seemed about par, although I did drop 223 places to 4,833 in the overall rankings. It's unfortunate that my season rank has been declining up until the end of the season. I feel like it should be happening in reverse, but the key figure is there. I've got two trades. I've got about 105k in the bank, so hopefully we can use that to make some good moves. And fortunately, I can field a full 17 so whether or not I actually need to use the two trades remains to be seen but some of the trade targets that I'm going to outline in this video are also ones I'm definitely considering myself. So I don't really feel like I need to do a teamless Tuesday recap I think we can just point out all the guys who are out Tyson Frizzell, Ryan Madison, Victor Bradley, Corey Harry Naira, Jerome Hughes, Brandon Smith I'm sure I've forgotten some other people but they're all out at least for this week. Madison, Radley, Harry and I are all going to be out for the rest of the regular Supercoach season. So a lot of empty spots in our second row forward if you add on Angus Crichton and Toe Harris as well. So that's definitely a spot we're going to be talking about in terms of a good replacement. Even my guy Tyson Frizzell, who I've been kind of hyping up a little bit as a good point of difference, he's gotten himself a one-week suspension. So yeah, not ideal for my team. But yeah, this is just probably a good summary of just this week alone, how much can change. And maybe is a good indicator if you do have the trades up your sleeve and if you are able to field a full 17 and you can't find any in your team to make a big upgrade it might just be worth holding it because we still do have three rounds of the season left to go so I first wanted to give some just due to the two Warriors standouts over the past three weeks and Josh Curran and Ewan Aitken. Josh Curran has just been absolutely on fire in the past three weeks, especially in the last two, getting like 114, I think it was, and then 139 last week. He's just been absolutely killing it. And Ewan Aitken, since he's been moved into the second row forward in the centering position for Supercoach, he's been delivering really, really solid points. You can see here, three round averages for these guys is 106 and 97 respectively. And they're also posting really, really strong base and attack stats especially Josh Curran with a three round average of 75 in base and attack and Ewan Aitken with a 67 in this category as well and with that really nice draw for the remaining three games Broncos, Raiders and Titans you can definitely see the points continuing for these two and I think they really should be high in your trading targets list. They're both very, very similarly priced at about 570k. Josh Curran obviously in your second row forward, Ewan Aitken in your center wings depending where you need the position to be filled. I'm guessing more people need it in second row forward because fortunately we do have Alex Johnson returning in the center wing so that does help out our center wing stocks just a little bit. I really like Josh Curran I think as the main target. He was in my side earlier in the season. He was a very very good cash cow with a good work rate. Well he's kept doing his work rate but he's added an offload and some attacking stats to his game. We can see in the past couple of weeks he's had try assists, scoring tries and really nice games to end the season. I think Curran is a great buy and I don't think it's really knee jerky because he's shown that in the past few weeks that he can deliver these big upside point games and he has that ability to get attacking stats. I don't really think it's too reactionary. I think it's a good time to jump on him at 570k. He's got a minus 43 break even so something to think about as well. I think you really want to capitalize on these next three games. So if you are looking to trade out like your Corey Harry and Naira, you know, Toe Harris or Madison, Victor Radley, any of those second row forwards who are going to be out for the rest of the season, I think Curran should be your number one priority. Obviously, Cam Murray is someone I've spoken about before. He is a little bit more expensive and I think you can capitalize on a little bit better of a draw if you go for a Josh Curran. And you and Aiken, similar in your center wing, he would be a really, really strong point of difference. I think he's still only owned by about 2% of the game and you wouldn't think he'd be heavily traded in given the low amount of trades that most people are on. So if you are looking for a point of difference, I think I really like you and Aiken and if you're looking to lock up extra points in your second row forward, really, really like Josh Curran as a trade target for this week. So moving on to the next point of discussion is Nathan Cleary, and should you be bringing in Nathan Cleary into your team this week? Long story short, if you have the trades and if you have the cash, I 100% would be advocating to bring in Nathan Cleary because we know on his day, he is so much better as a halfback option compared to everyone else in the field in terms of super coach. And I think if you say you've got two trades left up your sleeve and you've got enough funds to be able to say, do a downgrade of a Terry Harris down to maybe like a good candidate, like a Sean Bloor, who's still averaging around the 50s and will still give you some depth, upgrading an inactive player in Sean Johnson up to Nathan Cleary, in my opinion, that's two trades well spent because you're actually adding in two healthy players who are giving you points and adding, adding to your depth. And you're also being able to bring in Cleary, which is a massive point of difference and a massive advantage to end the season. As a lot of teams either have no trades or very, very few trades to be able to even bring in Nathan Cleary. So I think you're definitely setting yourself up for success in doing so. 
Obviously, there is some risk of a re-injury, but I think with three games left in the season, I feel like the Panthers are going to want to try and get minutes in him as much as possible in the lead-up to the finals. And so even if you only play, say, 60 minutes a game, you would think that they would rest him when the Panthers have got the game well and truly wrapped up, and usually that means Cleary has done well, and we know how easily he can score the points. So I really like Cleary as a buy if you've got the trades and you've got the cash. Obviously, if you've got enough cash to do a upgrade to Cleary in one move, I think that's obviously an even better situation to be in yourself. If, say, you're like me, you don't, you can't quite stretch there in terms of the cash or you're looking for a little bit cheaper of an option to replace Jerome Hughes who I think is going to be obviously one of the biggest trade outs this week given that he's out for this week and given how Storm treat concussions we've seen in the past they could be very cautious with him and he might miss next week and even potentially round 25 as well. Then Daily Cherry Evans, I think, is probably the next best halfback option to go for. He's at 740k, so he is obviously expensive himself, but nowhere near the price of Cleary. And I do prefer his draw in comparison to Cleary, because Cleary does have games against the Rabbitohs and the Eels, which can be tougher, although we know that Cleary can get points against anyone. He's basically fixture-proof. Cherry Evans definitely does perform better in terms of point scoring when Manly obviously pile on the points, and that's more likely to be in these easier games. So Raiders, Bulldogs, and Cowboys to end the season, I think Cherry Evans could do very, very well, and I think he could be seeing those big 100-plus point scores we've seen so far this season. So I think if you're not able to stretch to Cleary just in this week, because he has got a relatively high break, even still at 134, and is about 900-plus K, if you had to wait on him for one more week, if you're able to field a 17, I think you could wait a week. Alternatively, if you are looking to just maximize your points and go for a halfback for this week and for the rest of the season, then Daily Cherry Evans is the one I would go for. There are some better budget options as well. You can consider like Mitch Pierce with the Knights good draw for the rest of the season. He put in a good performance a couple of weeks ago when he first came back from his injury. Uh, Braden Trindle is also someone I've mentioned uh, on the channel as well. He's goal kicking for the Sharks who don't have a horrible run to end the season as well. But realistically, I don't think he'd be going there. I think for halfback, you're really looking to either get in Cleary or Cherry Evans in my opinion. And I think both can be great options to end your season to capitalize on your head-to-heads and also make some ground up in the overall rankings. I will also quickly touch on the fullback options given how important of a position it is for Supercoach. Obviously the big talking point this week is Tom Tavojevic. Is he going to be in this week? Is he going to be out? There were the reports earlier in the week that he was going to be out for maybe two to three weeks and to be honest I know this is going to be sound a bit cruel. I do have the two trades. I was kind of hoping he was going to be out just because I knew I would be able to trade him out. I could have traded him to a Pappenhausen and then traded Cody Nikarima to Cleary. I thought that was a dream scenario but it looks better than that. It looks like he is going to be potentially available for this week. If not this week, he hopefully should be back next week as well because he is in serious contention for a Dalian. And I think that would make him really want to be out there playing for Manly as well as that they do want to be chasing a top four position. They play early in the round. It's a Friday 6 p.m. kickoff. If you can wait with your trades and your captaincy and all that kind of stuff to see if he gets named. If he doesn't get named, I would base a lot of your trade decisions on that. Like for myself, if he doesn't get named, I might not be able to field the full 17, so I might have to do a trade. But if he's named, obviously you can play him with confidence against the Raiders and obviously is a very strong captain's consideration. If you have got a few trades up your sleeve and you're looking to switch, you know, Tom Travoy, which or even Clint Gutherson, who hasn't been doing that well, on trading Gutherson, I don't think this is actually the best week, given that he is versing the Cowboys this round. He does tend to do better in the easier matchup. And I think this is the last week that you can play him with confidence. I think the best options, again, I've said it in the past few weeks, Pappenhausen, Ponga, and Tedesco. I've said to, for the past week or two that Tedesco, I think, is the best option. He just looks to be full of confidence, running really strong. Ponga, yes, he has had some easy matchups, but he hasn't been putting up amazing scores. He's not goal-kicking as well. I obviously still think he has the best draw, but I think Tedesco, in my opinion, is probably just overall going to be the safer option. His draw is also pretty decent with the Dragons and the Raiders. Rabbitohs, obviously, is a little bit tougher. Pappenhausen has been named in the starting number one spot, which we haven't seen for such a long time now. He could be really, really tempting because you'd think he'd be goal kicking as well. A matchup against the Titans, geez, that could be a massive game for Pappenhausen. So if you're willing to take the punt on a Pappenhausen, I think he could be a massive point of difference for you this week as well. But there is some risk to that. I think if you're looking to play a little bit safer in terms of your fullback trade-ins, I think you could go for a Tedesco. I actually still really like Adam Dewey. He just, whenever he plays at uh, the 5 8 position, he just seems to be getting points for fun. Um, doesn't look like he does that much in the game, and then he still comes away with like a 70 or an 80 or even a 100, to be honest. So I think Dewey, if you're wanting to get him in, you can obviously get him in at fullback, but I think he is more expensive than Tedesco. So I probably would just aim to get Tedesco, in my opinion. Reese Walsh has actually been doing okay, and Broncos, we know that they uh, could see the most points to fullbacks. He could be a really, really strong option as well, and definitely would be a really big point of difference, which I am a bit of a fan of. You know, when you've only got three games left in the season, your risk of your point of difference player underperforming, the, the overall risk of that is less so because you have such a short span of time for them to hurt you that I think 
going with a Walsh, you know, a strong point of difference is a good way to go about it as well. Now we'll just also have a quick look at the top trade-ins and trade-outs, although I will preface a lot of this in that I think a lot of the trades have been made pre like teamless Tuesday news from when I pulled this because we're seeing Tom Trevojevic is still a very high trade-out candidate. A lot of the trade-outs in my opinion make a lot of sense. You know, you've got Jerome Hughes. Yes, he might only be out for this one week, but I am cautious about the Storm's approach to concussions. They are typically very well, cautious with their concussion uh, approach to their players, which is obviously a great thing to see. But for Supercoach purposes, it's not as good. And I think there's a good chance that Hughes obviously misses this week, could even miss next week. And who knows, he could even miss round 25 if they're looking to really protect him before the finals. So I think Hughes, if you can stretch up to a Cleary, is an, obviously a fantastic trade. Even to a Cherry Evans, I really, really like that move as well. Madison, Radley, Crichton. Crichton I don't really agree with, given that he is coming back in round 25. If you are able to cover your second row forward, I would still stick with him just because you know that he can be a body in round 25. But Madison and Radley make sense for your tradeouts. Harry O'Naira, Brandon Smith, obviously just missing this week by the look of it, so I don't necessarily think you have to trade out. Brandon Smith, uh, Reed Miney is gone for the season. Sean Johnson probably being sold for Nathan Cleary. Brian Toto, there is some potential talk that he could be back for round 25. Apparently he's recovering well from his syndesmosis and he's looking like he'll be back for the final series, but they may look to bring him back in round 25. So in my opinion, if you've held up until this point and you're able to cover the rest of your 17, I would maybe just hold and see if he's an option for you in round 25 because Brian Toto, as a point of difference, that would be really, really juicy. As kind of touched on it before, Tom Trevojevic as the fourth most traded out, I wouldn't be doing that in this week if you know that he's playing, obviously. If he's out, even for just this week, I think he's so valuable. You really have to think about it. And like, he's $1.1 million. If you trade him out, are you just going to bank the cash and be able to bring him back in? If that's your strategy, I think that's fine because you can capitalize on the fullback points. But if you're looking to trade him out and then not bring him back in, the draw for the Manly Sea Eagles is really, really strong. They've got the Bulldogs and then the Cowboys. I think in those two games, I wouldn't not really want to be going without Tom Trevojevic. That would definitely be a hide behind the sofa and watch the game kind of moment because who knows what he could get against those two opponents. So I don't really understand that trade out in my opinion, unless there's some confirmation that he's out for the rest of the uh, Supercoach season. In terms of the trade-ins, a few of them we have touched on. Cleary, I've already discussed, as has Josh Curran. Harry Grant, yes, that probably is something worthwhile to discuss. He has been named in the starting hook position and no Brandon Smith this week means he should be playing the full 80 minutes. And coming up against the Gold Coast Titans, I think he could be a fantastic vice captain, even a captaincy option potentially. Um, and for that reason, I think he's a great trade-in target as well. We know he's basically, in my opinion, the best hooker to go, to go for in Supercoach. I think the gap between him and the next best is quite but is quite a distance. And so Harry Grant, I really, really like that as a trade-in if you're able to make it work. Some good candidates could be a Jaden Braley, although he hasn't done too much wrong in the past couple of weeks. He's got like 56 last week, scoring nothing but base. Um, you could move maybe a Josh Schuster to Harry Grant if you're looking to be ultra-aggressive, but Manly's draw is pretty good. I still like Schuster as an option as well. I think if you have obviously got like a Reed Miney just sitting there, that's a perfect kind of trade-out for Harry Grant, in my opinion. Cherry Evans, I've discussed him. really, really like him as a buy. Nico Hines, I'm not sure if I'd be going in, going out and buying him, in my opinion. He has been named in the starting halfback position, which is good, but I think with Pappenhausen starting at fullback, I don't expect Hines to be goal-kicking, but I still think he's an okay hold. But at 629k, that is a lot of money to be paying for a guy who's still not 100% certain now on what his job security is like. If, say, you're looking for a center wing option, I think Ewan Aiken is a lot cheaper, and we know that he's a very safe start for the rest of the season in the back row. You could go for a Valentine Holmes as well. I still think there are better options in the, uh, in the center wing. Tedesco is a great trade-in option at fullback. Brandon Smith, I don't understand how he's on the top trade-outs and the trade-ins. Uh, that's a bit of a weird one, but yeah, he's not playing this week, so I don't know why he'd be bringing him in. Barnett, yeah, he could be a good buy because we know that Fitzgibbon is actually out for the rest of the season, so Barnett has locked down a starting edge role, so he could actually be a decent option in the second row forward as well to replace any of the multitude of guys that we know have been suspended or injured for the rest of the season. Ruben Garrick, yep, yeah, I mean, he's really expensive. He's 827k, but geez, 199 points last week. Who would have thought at the start of 2021 that Ruben Garrick would be scoring 199? No one, essentially, unless if you did, you're an absolute wizard. But yeah, 334 trade-ins. Yes, that is super, super expensive. But I think with those three games coming up, I think you just have to bite the bullet and just capitalize on the points if you haven't got him in already. The Troy Mitchell as a final trade-in, I think he could be a decent fullback. I didn't really mention him in my fullback options previously, but he's still pretty expensive at 699k. I think I'd pay the extra 3k just for Tedesco, whose draw is a little bit better in my opinion than Latrell's. And I think it's going to be a little bit more consistent for you. Otherwise, you could even go for an Adam Dewey as well in that fullback position.
So moving on to our vice captaincy and captaincy candidates, could be a very interesting discussion this week, all really depending, I think, on the availability of Tom Trevojevic, because I think if Tom Trevojevic is playing, he, in my opinion, is the best captaincy or vice captain to go for if you've got other options at the end of the week. Harry Grant, I think, is the best vice captain option if you do have him. Coming up against the Titans, we expect him to be playing the full 80 minutes. The Titans do concede quite a few points to the hookers, seventh worst in the competition, but I think Harry Grant is that much better of an option at the hooker position. I think he could be a fantastic vice captain this round. If you're looking at a lot of the manly options, you've got Tom Trevojevic obviously there. Daily Cherry Evans, if you do bring him in, um, something I'm looking to do, if, if potentially Tom Trevojevic is ruled out, I think I might throw the vice captaincy on Cherry Evans and then, I'm not sure about the captaincy, I might actually put it on a Clint Gutherson versus the Cowboys, maybe he might do well, um, but obviously if Tom Trevojevic plays, I think I'm going to be looking to vice captain him or captain him straight away because the Raiders do concede quite a few points to the respective positions, 7th to fullbacks, ninth to the halfbacks, um, and if you look there, both Cherry Evans and uh, Tom Trevojevic are coming off big scores from last week. You could also very easily consider Ruben Garrick as a vice captaincy option. I haven't got him in here purely just for the fit, uh, but Ruben Garrick I think could be a very good vice captain option as well. Captaincy, Cleary is a bit of a risk in my opinion actually because the Rabbitohs are pretty decent at defending halfbacks. 13th worst in the competition, so there's only a couple of teams actually better than them at defending the halfbacks. Um, Cleary was steady last week, obviously the 82 points, but who knows how he's going to be managed with his minutes and stuff, so I think it is a big uh, captaincy risk. Maybe you could go for a vice captaincy on him instead, um, and that would be a little bit less risky. I think th the next three I've listed I think are going to be pretty decent captain options. I mean, Adam Dewey against the Sharks. Yes, they haven't been that bad at defending opposition halfbacks, but I really like Dewey's consistency playing at 5'8". Goal kicking, he takes a lot of runs, he can get offloads, he gets try assists, he just gets a lot of points. He's really someone I'm, I'm really upset about, actually, to be honest. Uh, I haven't been able to get on him all season, and I don't think I'll be able to. He's just been a super good option for owners. Still relatively a point of difference as well. So I think Dewey, if Tom Trevojevic does not play, I think Dewey could be a great captain option. Similar to Ponga and Tedesco. Obviously, this always depends on Tom Trevojevic not being named because um, you know you can't have both of these guys as a vice captain or a captain because they're all listed at fullback. But Ponga against the Bulldogs and Tedesco against the Dragons both could do very, very well. Ponga only got 36 points last week in an easy matchup. That does tend to stray me away from Ponga. And I think if you have got Tedesco instead, I think he could be a great option option at captain. Some alternatives that I haven't got here, Clint Gutherson, I did mention, it is a bit of a risk because the Eels have not shown much in the past few weeks, but coming up against the Cowboys who do concede a lot of points, surely Gutherson can do a little bit better. But overall, I think the captaincy is very wide open this week if Tom isn't named, but if he's named, I think you have to lean with Tom Trevojevic as the captain for the round. So I've got all the break-evens up for all the teams, but I won't go through every team in detail. I'll just pick out a few players here and there who I still think are decent trade-in options for this week and obviously for the rest of the season. Broncos, to be honest, not too interested in anyone outside of Payne Haas, but I don't think you're looking to maximize your trades at front row forward because the upside is just not there. Bulldogs, again, no real standout purchases. I mean, you've got Josh Jackson maybe in the second row forward who puts up very, very solid scores because he always just delivers very, very good base points. He could be a very boring, safe option, but I think at this point in the season, surely you want to be going for the little bit more exciting, higher upside options at second row forward like a Josh Curran. Raiders, for me, not too much interest in their players given that they've got a relatively tough draw to end the season. And again, similar with the Dragons, in my opinion. From the Sea Eagles, I think most of the candidates we've already kind of well aware of, you know, Garrick, Tom Trevojevic, Daly Terry Evans, even Josh Huster, etc. I think those are the main guys that you'll be looking to bring in if you haven't got them in already. From the Storm, I think Harry Grant is the standout option because we think he's going to be playing their full 80 minutes. Ryan Pappenhausen could be a big point of difference as well at fullback if we see that he's goal kicking up against the Titans. There are a lot of points on offer and he's so cheap now at 426k. Yeah, Pappenhausen could be a Bit of a ballsy move, but I really like that if you're looking for a strong punt this week. The Knights have been not, they've not been too impressive in the past few weeks. The draw has not been too bad, but you know, Ponga, 555k, to be honest, I don't actually know if I'll be going out and buying him now. I have been a bit put off by some of the performances recently. I think I'd actually prefer maybe a Pappenhausen or even a, probably a Tedesco in my opinion. For the Cowboys, I did mention him a little bit earlier, Val Holmes, I think he could still be a okay option at center wing. He's not too badly priced at 540k. Um, so if you are looking to move off some of your second row forwards who, and you have got the uh, center wing and dual flexibility, uh, you could switch one of them to a Val Holmes if you're looking for a more high upside plays. Outside of him, I don't really think I'm looking too hard at any of the other Cowboys players. From the Eels, again, not looking to buy any of their players given their really, really tough run to end the season. Panthers, I think Cleary is the standout option if you're looking to go for someone. He has got that very high break even of 136. So I think if you can wait out a week, I 
because then he hopefully does come in a little bit cheaper. And if you are looking to bring him in and you're set on him, but you can't afford the money, we can cross our fingers and hope that he underperforms that break even and we can pick him up a little bit cheaper next round. The Sharks, again, if you've got some of their players, I wouldn't be looking to offload because their draw is okay, but I wouldn't be actively going out and buying any of their op players. From the Rabdos, we do see Alex Johnston, Campbell Graham, and Dan Gagai all return this round, so that definitely does help to the overall attacking strength of the Rabbitohs, and they're definitely going to need it up against the Panthers. Bit of an interesting argument, actually, on Alex Johnston, whether you sit him or you play him this week. Personally, I'm probably just going to play, because surely most people are looking at lower numbers, so they're having to play their center wings. If you have got the flexibility to not have to play him, you could consider that. Although looking back at some of his numbers throughout the season, he scored 75 against Melbourne in the very in the very first game of the season. He did have a, a low score against Penrith of about 21, and that was in the game where the Rabbitohs just got beaten by like 50. I don't think they're going to do as badly this, this round because I think they, they themselves as a team are performing a lot better, and Panthers are a little bit under what they're normally capable of as well. And so Alex Johnson, I think if you just get to try a line break thrown in there, he'll probably still get around 40 to 50 points in my opinion. And I think with Cody Walker on his outside, being able to deliver him good quality ball, I still really think Alex Johnson is an okay player this round, but surely most of us, we can't be too picky at this stage. And Cam Murray at 680k, he didn't have a great week last week after hyping him up as the best second row forward option to go for. Uh, I know it's a bit flip floppy saying, oh no, I don't think he is. I still think he's a great trading option at second row forward, but he's such a high price tag. I personally would actually look to save the 100k and go for a Josh Curran. From the Roosters, again, with the low trades, I think you're looking to prioritize for the main big hitters. And I think in this category, it is definitely James Tedesco. From the Titans, again, not actively looking at buying any of their options. I'm assuming you already own a day for feeder, but even he himself coming off the bench hasn't been able to deliver those super, super high point scoring games that we saw at the beginning of the season. The Warriors, few good options to consider here. I mean, you've got Josh Curran with that minus 43 break even. You've got Ewan Aiken at 566k. He is a little bit more expensive, obviously, than what he was just a couple of weeks back. But I think if you're looking for a solid 60 to 70 in your set center wing, you could go for a Ewan Aiken. And Reese Walsh, I still think, could be an okay option at fullback as well. Goal kicking, good draw to end the season. Fairly priced at 526k. He could be a lot stronger of a point of difference compared to, say, like a Caleb Ponga. And finally, on the Tigers, again, not too many options. I think you've obviously got Adam Dewey. Sean Bloor, I mentioned as a downgrade option if you're looking to create money to bring in the likes of Cherry Evans or Nathan Cleary, who are both very, very expensive. He's priced at 273k with a minus six break even, so you should expect him to go up in value. But just that price point of 270k, you know, going down from like a Toe Harris to him will create 200k for you. So you feel if you just need that extra bit of money to make the spend up to those high price players, I really like Sean Bloor as a downgrade just to give you like 40 to 50 points points a week playing on the edge there but outside of that not too many major investments I think like Nofaluma for example someone I've been mentioning uh, quite a bit in the past few weeks he just isn't delivering the super coach points that we saw from last season which is a bit discouraging given that I've owned him since about round eight at 449k if you are looking for a cheaper option in your center wing you could go for him but personally I think there are probably going to be better options. Like for example, his opposite winger in Ken Mamalo, he scored 76 and 77 in the past two weeks. He definitely looks like he's been get a little bit more ball than Nofaluma. So I think if you are looking for a West Tigers winger, maybe you could consider going for Mamalo, who's definitely a strong point of difference option for the rest of the season. So a quick update on our round 22 top scorer. It was Levi from Panda Eagles 21 with a big 1,624, which is a massive score last week as well. And in our group league, the overall top five, we still have Andrew sitting at the top there with Eliminators, overall rank of 14. So he has slipped a little bit. He was sitting in the top 10 for quite a while. So hopefully he can get into that top 10. I think if you get into the top 11, you get some additional prizes. So hopefully Andrew can get into that top 11. Behind him, we've got Jason, James, Marcella, and Samuel. Some common names that I've seen here now. They've consolidated their position in the top 400, and hopefully they can end the season very, very well. If anyone is still looking to join the group, the code is 286239. Well, that's it, guys. That is the round 23 trade targets and round preview. Bit of a shorter video again. I think with lower trades running out, we have some options that we can bring in to target, but I don't know how many we can actually bring in given the low trades. But hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Good luck for round 23. As always, if you like the video, please do hit the thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing to the channel as well. If any of you guys have noticed, I have been putting out, out some more fantasy Premier League content as well. So if any of you are interested in that, those will be coming out on the channel and we'll provide some additional content when the NRL offseason begins. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next video.